Hey guys, what's up? This is Sonic Soul here, and I'm coming at you with another video. This time, we're going to be covering Rose. They previewed her in the Street Fighter V Winter Update stream, and they showed off a lot of things with her. And I want to kind of break her down so that way we can get a strategy going with her so that way we're ready to play her when she comes out. So, enough of the chit chat, let's just get right into it. So, first, let's just cover some of Rose's normals that we see in the stream. Now, of course, the stream was running at 30 frames per second, so I'm not going to be able to count the startup frames, but I can tell you that these are her medium normals. Her standing medium punch is actually her close proximity stand medium punch from Street Fighter 4. And her crouching medium punch is also the same one from Street Fighter 4 as well. I would imagine that the crouching medium punch would be cancelable, I hope. Now I'm sure with these medium punches, like most medium punches in this game, you probably want to save these when you're applying pressure and trying to get conversions off of them. Now the next normal that we see here from Rose is her crouching heavy punch. And I would imagine this would be her main like normal anti-air that she'll be using on the ground. Now, of course, the animation looks like it's borrowed itself from Street Fighter 4 as it looks very similar to her focus attack from that game. It also has like this little like scarf effect that's above her head. So I'm hoping that it does kind of cover that range as well, but we'll have to see. So the next normal we see after crouching heavy punch is her crouching medium kick. And her crouching medium kick actually looks like it has a completely different animation than her previous iteration. Now her crouching medium kick is indeed cancelable, so she'll be able to go right into soul spark or soul spiral if the opponent wants to dare to try to walk to her or away from her. So the next two normals that we see here are both medium kick normals. So we see that she does standing medium kick, which is actually her far stand medium kick in Street Fighter 4. And then we see her close stand medium kick from Street Fighter 4 uh, in this game as well. But we know that there are no proximity normals in Street Fighter V. So this has to be a command normal, this leaping forward kick that she's doing. I think that it might be like forward medium kick for the input. One thing to note about these two normals here is that she leaps up in the air for them. So these are really good at being able to avoid low attacks. So stuff like Ryu's crouching medium kick for example. So the next set of normals that we see here are her heavy kick normals. And the first thing to note is that the first heavy kick normal that we see here is a new normal. We haven't seen this in a game where she's in yet. This knee attack, I think this just might be her regular standard standing heavy kick. So I wonder the advantage on it. Now one thing to note about this heavy kick is that it is indeed special cancelable. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the next thing that we see here right after is her Soul Piede. This is the command normal that she had in Street Fighter Alpha 3 and in Street Fighter 4. You perform it by doing forward and heavy kick. This is her long range poke that she annoys people with. Right after that we then see uh, what would be her far standing heavy kick in Street Fighter 4. It's a very like long range poke in that game. In this game it doesn't seem to go as far from what I'm seeing. But it still has that property where she leaps on top of the scarf. So she has to be able to go over lows using this normal as well. This might be a command normal just like the PA day. So I wonder what the input would be for it. Uh, if it's not going to be like a regular standing heavy kick. So the next thing we see after her heavy kicks is of course her forward throw. And her forward throw actually pushes them back pretty far. She lifts them up in the air before slamming them down. There's a lot of distance between her and the opponent here. So I don't think she's going to be able to like do dash ups or anything like that. And of course if you dash up after a throw normally in this game you are negative. But she looks like she can be in range to do her forward hard kick. Which is the sole piede. The lunging kick that we saw beforehand. So she might be able to meaty that on their knockdown at the very least. This is good because she wants to keep the opponent away. Another normal that we see here is her jumping heavy punch. Her jumping heavy punch basically looks similar to her uh, far jumping heavy punch in Street Fighter 4 and in all of her other games as well. It's a far range uh, jumping normal that covers a good portion of the screen. It's a very good jump in. It's probably her primary jump in that she will be using. So right after her forward throw, they show off her standing heavy punch, which is called Soul Breeze. The standing heavy punch is actually her next longest range normal, uh, next to Soul Piede, which is the forward hard kick that you saw beforehand. Uh, this is actually her far standing heavy punch in Street Fighter 4. So the next thing we see is her crouching heavy kick. It has slightly good range. It's going to be mostly standard fare as far as most sweeps go, so nothing extraordinary here. However, they do show off her slide, her down forward medium kick, and it actually has a different animation than the one seen in Street Fighter 4. Now, I will note that it doesn't look like it has the same amount of frame advantage as the 1 and 4 did, because you could space it out and link crouching medium punch right after. 
Uh, however, they do say that they want to try to make her slide work with her B system. So they do show that off and we'll cover that later in the video. The slide is really important because you can duck under certain high normals and some projectiles with it. Now they do also show her forward walk speed and back walk speed as well while covering her normals. Her forward walk speed that they showed off earlier, it looks a little bit on the slow side, it's a little below average. She won't be walking people down like Cami or Kareen uh, in that sense, but she's going to mostly try to walk to maintain position. Same thing with her back walk speed, it's a little bit slower as well. So she's going to be using the rest of her toolkit to kind of annoy and frustrate the opponent and kind of keep herself at a particular position. That's why her walk speed is a little bit slower than most. We also get to see a glimpse of Rose's back dash and with her back dash, it doesn't look like it goes too far. It looks like it goes about one character space, maybe a little less than that. As far as the back dash speed, I can't really count frames from the footage, but it does look like it's pretty average in terms of its speed. Not too fast, not too slow. Um, the thing about this back dash, it's going to be like her forward walk and her back walk. She's going to want to do this to more or less reposition herself and also get away from the opponent so that way she can keep them out. Alright, now on to her special moves. Here they show off her tried and true soul spark. She's always had this move. It's her projectile. I'm sure it's going to be a Hadouken, basically quarter circle forward plus a punch. Uh, she has three different strengths depending on what punch she presses. But the one thing to note is that she can now perform this move in air. So she has three different versions that she could do in the air as well. I believe the heavy one is going to go further forward. The medium version is going to be a little bit closer to her. And the light one is going to be directly below her. So she's got three different air fireballs that she could do to cover three different trajectories of approach that the opponent can do. Now this is not going to be like Akuma where he falls down with the fireball so he gets a conversion with it. This is going to be more like Falk where she does her shot in the air. And she literally like just bounces back up for like a few frames before falling straight down. So this is still going to have the same applications for characters that want to keep people away. Rose is going to be one of those characters. So they want her to kind of control that space in that manner. Now the EX version of her Soul Spark actually knocks down. In previous iterations it never did this. The EX Soul Spark would keep the opponent standing. But here we're seeing it knock down and they're being pushed away damn near to full screen. So it's really good for building distance and I think it's going to be utilized very well with the rest of her toolkit. So the next special move that they decide to show off for Rose is a new special move called Soul Power. I believe they got inspiration for this from her Street Fighter 4 Omega mode iteration where the special move is called Soul Bubble and it's basically an inactive projectile that covers the upper body portion of the screen in that game and it only became active until later frames. It was made to deter people from jumping in on her in that mode. But in this game, they gave it to her as a regular like special move and it covers like horizontally near the midsection on the screen and instead of it moving forward, she chooses three different spots to choose from where it will remain stationary based on what button strength that she presses. So I'm assuming the light version is close to her, the medium version is further away, and the heavy version is practically full screen. And those three different versions, the projectile doesn't come out or is inactive until later frames where it will actually blow up and become an active hitbox. We even see that later on she does her soul piede, her forward hard kick, and hit the opponent into the trap allowing her to potentially confirm after it. So this special move I think is going to be inputted with quarter circle back plus a punch button because she no longer has her reflect in this game. So this is the move that they're going to use to replace reflect. They did also say that Rose will be able to do her soul power move in air. So I'm hoping that she'll be able to tiger knee it so that way she can do the soul power just as she jumps off the ground. I think this move is going to be really good because she's going to be able to convert off of her long range pokes or kind of net extra damage and on top of that uh, other moves like her slide she'll be able to close the gap and then also convert off the trap and get huge damage from that as well. She'll be able to set up her soul power by using her EX soul spark to kind of knock the opponent down and push them further away. This will allow her to put the trap on top of them and get some set play going. And then of course the later tools that we'll see on in the video she'll be able to use those tools uh, to be able to mix up the opponent. So definitely a good addition to her toolkit overall. So the next special move that they decide to show off for Rose is another new special move called Soulbind. 
they were actually very meticulous and they showed off how they set up the special move and how they went animating it and also uh, the blueprint as to how it was made. So I think it's pretty interesting that they decided to make a new special move for her. Um, but I understand why as well that they needed to develop this. Uh, she's no longer going to have her soul throw. This is going to be her primary special move anti-air that she's using. Reason she won't have soul throw, one of them, is because Minot already has soul throw as well. So that's why they probably don't want to give it to her. The other reason we'll discuss a little bit later in the video. But basically, this is going to be her special move anti-air. You're going to perform it by using a DP motion plus any punch, I assume. And this particular special move is going to knock the opponent down in front of Rose. She's going to grab them with the scarf and then knock them down in front of her. Uh, and this is going to allow her to set up a few things. Mainly, we saw that soul power before. This is going to allow her to set up soul power right after. So that way, she can set up on wake up and potentially get some uh, meaty pressure going. Uh, the EX version of this move is seen to have some head invuln, it seemed to have some invulnerability to airborne attacks for the first couple of frames, and it, in the fireball, we see that Rose is using her air fireball, and it goes completely through Rose doing the soul bind. And the other part of this move too is that so the EX version also nets her a wall bounce, allowing her to convert right after the move and go into whatever move that she wants that will give her the most knockdown advantage that she needs. In this case, I'm assuming it's going to be soul spiral. Uh, now, the thing is too, remember that since it wall bounced, characters cannot uh, back rise off of a wall bounce. They must get up as a normal rise. So even if she doesn't convert into a special move, they're forced to get up one way. So this is really good overall for Rose as an anti-air option. And I think it's a good replacement for Soul Throw, given the direction that the developers want to move with Rose in Street Fighter V. Now, as you saw before, of course, she's got one more special move that they show up, but they don't really explain called Soul Spiral. This is another returning move that she has. It's probably going to be her combo ender tool. She's mostly going to use this to get the knockdown uh, in Street Fighter 4. She was able to space this move out so that way it would be safe. Most of the games, it was similar. It's usually safe if she spaces it out. The input for this move is usually performed with quarter circle forward plus a kick button. So now we're going to get into the V system with Rose and we're going to cover her V skills first. With her V skill 1, they show that off first and it's actually her tarot cards. We've only ever seen the tarot cards kind of teased with Street Fighter Alpha 2 and Street Fighter Alpha 3. But now she's actually using them in her main toolkit. So with her V skill 1, she's going to use her tarot cards to essentially buff herself or debuff the opponent. And the thing about it is that we see in the beginning that she's cycling through her tarot card pool. So if you look on the bottom left hand corner, you can see that there's a tarot card icon, a little small icon that shows like what arcana uh, the tarot card will be, which will indicate what kind of buff or debuff will be happening when she uses her V skill. Now, she can cycle through whatever tarot card she wants by tapping medium punch plus medium kick together. This will allow her to rotate between her tarot card pool. So the next thing we see with Rose's V skill 1 is that she's actually holding up the tarot card above her head and she's charging her V gauge up while she's just standing there holding the card up. I'm assuming that she's going to be able to do this by holding down the medium punch plus medium kick uh, together. So this could be one of two things as well, because we see behind her that Dalsim is being shown on the tarot card, and it's actually uh, the Magician Arcana. Uh, I know this because this is actually based off of the tarot cards that they sold to everybody as merchandise for the game. So these tarot cards, they have the different fighters on them, and this one has Dalsim on it. So this could either be one of two things uh, why we see Dalsim. It could be that this card is shown whenever she's charging up the V skill, or this could be a placeholder for whatever card that she has next in the tarot card pool that will be used and that she's just holding it up at that time. But basically, all you need to know is that if she holds down medium punch plus medium kick together, she will be able to continuously build V gauge or V meter, uh, but she will be in a stationary position. And it will also change to the next tarot card that she'll have in her pool. So right after we see her Visco 1 charging up her V-meter, the next card that she draws, she throws it at the opponent. And the opponent glows purple. And we see an image of Sagat showing off the Death Arcana. So as you can see on the bottom left hand corner of the screen, it shows that it is indeed the Death Arcana. Uh, this is a debuff on the opponent. This is going to poison them. 
because we know that when Fong does poison, it actually highlights them purple as well. So that's what I think it's going to be in terms of that debuff. Uh, now, I'm assuming that the input to throw the card at the opponent might be uh, a input, a directional input plus V skill. So that might be what they'll use uh, to input the card to throw at the opponent or to buff Rose herself. Uh, the other thing too is that this tarot card matches what is on the HUD you see at the bottom. Right after we see her use the Death Arcana on the opponent, she then ends up using another card. Uh, we end up seeing her use uh, a card that gives her a little bit of V-meter, plus it glows her red. I think that this might be an attack boost, only because the way that she's glowing, it looks like it could be similar to when you get a power-up from Street Fighter Cross Tekken, where you've used the gem system to basically buff your attack, speed, so on and so forth. So, once again, I think this might be a directional input plus medium punch plus medium kick. And in the background, we actually see an image slightly of Zangief on the tarot card. And the numbers on top of it is for the Chariot Arcana. So, we're seeing that that particular image and the Arcana doesn't match up with the Arcana that we see in the HUD. Being that of the Temperance or Sea Viper. So, it might be a placeholder. But essentially, this particular... Arcana is going to buff her in terms of building V meter and potentially giving her attack power. And then finally, to end off the V skill one, we see her toss a tarot card again at the opponent. Uh, she has in the HUD uh, the Arcana for Hanged Man, which is supposed to be Rolento. But when she throws the card and you see the image on the opposing side of the screen, we see an image of Balrog or the tower. And then we see the opponent glow green. I think that this might be a speed debuff on the opponent. Uh, again, I'm just assuming this based off of cross Tekken potentially, but we don't actually know. Uh, this also builds her a bit of V-meter on hit as well. So that's another thing to note. And again, I think the direction or the input for this will be a direction plus medium punch plus medium kick. And lastly, here are all the HUD icons that we see alongside the tarot cards that we have seen in the video. There's one that we haven't seen displayed uh, on the opponent, which is the star, and that's because it wasn't used. That one's supposed to be Rainbow Mika. We don't know the buff or debuff for that one yet, but essentially she's going to have the ability to cycle through a lot of these tarot cards and buff or debuff the opponent. And the thing about it too is that, of course, these cards don't really line up with the, what we see in the HUD, so they might just be placeholders for other cards that they will add later on. So she's going to have a large tarot card pool that she'll probably be able to play with to buff and debuff the opponent. I see her utilizing this V skill 1, uh, mostly within like matchups where she's going to play that long game, like she's going to just grind it out. I think against grapplers especially, she might try to use this V skill on them to try and like basically annoy them and pester them. Uh, but it might also be good for herself as well. And she's going to have plenty of ways to set this up too. So for her second V skill, we actually see Rose doing her iconic soul satellite move that she had in Street Fighter 4. It was her Ultra 2 in that game. Uh, in this game, the way you're going to do soul satellite is that you press medium punch plus medium kick and one orb will come out, not two. So when you press medium punch plus medium kick, an orb will come out and circle Rose. If you press it again while she has an orb out, she can have up to two surrounding her. Uh, this will be good because it'll allow her to protect herself basically from the opponent approaching her. Uh, it will also aid her within projectile war as well because it'll have two projectiles up to two basically surrounding her and nullifying projectiles as well. Uh, the other thing too is that she will be able to use this on offense. She can use this to extend combos from many of her pokes and uh, many of her command normals like her slide for instance. Uh, or maybe be able to juggle after some of her special moves. Uh, the other thing too is that she'll be able to use this as set play. So the thing is she's going to have uh, stuff with her V system, particularly with her V triggers that will allow her to use this as a set play option to mix up the opponent with it. Now, the reason why she doesn't have soul throw, the second reason why she doesn't have it aside from not having it, is that I feel the developers don't want to give her soul throw and have soul satellite be this accessible as a V skill. 
Uh, her having Soul Throw on top of Soul Satellite will allow her to have mix-ups all the time using uh, V-Skill 2 as it'll be accessible. Um, so I think they want to balance it out. Uh, if she's going to have V-Skill like this, they don't want her to have Soul Throw to set play people up uh, on their knockdowns for essentially no cost. So now we're going to get into her V-Triggers. And with Rose's V-Trigger 1, we see her getting a teleport. She's going to be getting... Uh, a teleport that she can use it goes in three different places uh, in front of the opponent directly above the opponent and away from the opponent uh, they say this is a time-based warp move they're referring to the v gauge so they're referring to the fact that it's going to be an install v trigger she's going to have a v timer so she's going to have a set amount of time where she can use this teleport uh, now i'm assuming the inputs for this teleport is going to be back plus heavy punch and heavy kick to move her away from the opponent uh neutral heavy punch plus heavy kick to move her in front of the opponent and forward heavy punch plus heavy kick to move her directly above the opponent's head and in front so she's going to have three different places where she can appear uh before the opponent now i think this is going to be very good with v skill 2 as i was saying before the reason they didn't give her soul throw is because they don't want her to have those cheeky mix-ups uh for free without any resource so I think that with her V-Skill 2, V-Trigger 1 will be a perfect like combination with it in order to create some good set play options with it. And also it might be good defensively because she'll be able to move herself away. The other thing about this teleport as well is that we see her converting or rather getting a jump normal right after she connects a fireball. She does the up teleport to teleport directly above the opponent's head and then convert right after the projectiles hit. So she's going to be able to use this both offensively and defensively for a multitude of situations. So I think this V-Trigger is really strong. So for the last move that they show off on the stream with Rose, they show off her V-Trigger 2, which is her iconic soul illusion from the Street Fighter Alpha series from Alpha 2 and Alpha 3. Uh, this move, you're going to perform it obviously by activating V-Trigger and Heavy Punch plus Heavy Kick, and it's going to be an install V-Trigger. So just like V-Trigger 1, it's going to be a timer. And she's going to summon a, another copy of herself behind her. And what this will do is it will mimic all of the actions that she's currently doing. So any normal or special move. So what's going to happen here is she's basically going to hit you twice for whatever move she does. Which will increase the damage output on her normals and specials. Uh, we also don't see that she summons multiple clones in a row. In the Alpha series, she summoned like five or six clones behind her, and it created a massive amount of damage on block and on chip. So the way they balanced it, just give her one extra clone. Uh, I think that this V-Trigger is also going to work well with V-Skill 2. It's going to allow her to extend combos and get that big burst damage as well. So this is going to be more for combo damage, uh, whereas V-Trigger 1 will be good for uh, positional advantage and set play. Although I do think that with V-Trigger 2 with the Soul Illusions, you might be able to meaty some buttons since the clone will linger out and Rose will recover in time. Uh, definitely something to experiment with. So to end off their Rose showcase, they show off two specific combos that they wanted to showcase the character with just to give you an idea of her combo structure. So the first thing they do is they show off her doing a jumping heavy punch into crouching heavy punch into what I assume is her heavy soul spiral. This is going to be like her main combo structure. She's going to want to knock down with that soul spiral or maybe even EX soul spark to try and toss the opponent away so she can set up those soul satellites or her V skill one, her tarot cards. And then for the second combo that they show off, they decide to utilize the soul power, her new special move, and use it in conjunction with her slide to show off what it can be capable of. So when they use the soul power, I'm assuming they're doing quarter circle back plus heavy punch to set the furthest range uh, soul power trap. And then they do the slide, they do down forward medium kick to knock them into the soul power so that way when it explodes, it hits very late. And it hits the opponent so that way they're able to link another normal after. So right after the soul power hits, they do standing heavy kick. And then they cancel the standing heavy kick right into EX soul spark. So they get that knockdown advantage. Which will then allow her to of course set up her V skill 1 or V skill 2 accordingly. So now that we've seen all of her special moves, normals, and uh, her V systems from the winter stream that they decide to show us, what is her archetype going to be? What is she going to play like? What is her strategy? 
So I think Rose obviously is going to be a zoner. She's going to try to keep the opponent at arm's length, basically swipe left on Tinder on them and keep them in the friend zone. She's going to want to use her fireball, her soul spark to kind of annoy them and pester them. She's also going to want to use her long range pokes like her soul piede, her forward hard kick, or her soul breeze, her standing heavy punch. She's going to want to use her standing heavy kick, any move basically to kind of poke at the opponent and be at arm's length. Some of these normals will of course be able to low crush and go over some of the opponent's lows and just be frustrating for them in terms of trying to stop her from walking away and getting away from them. Uh, the other thing too is that she's got that soul power, that new move, which will allow her to also control space at arm's length as well. The air fireballs will also control space from a more uh, horizontal, vertical-esque space. It will be able to keep uh, the opponent away as well. Uh, whenever the opponent gets frustrated because they are tired of getting zoned out by Rose, they will eventually meet her soul bind, which will be her new anti-air in place of soul throw. This will allow her to essentially anti-air the opponent and then set up whatever she wants in terms of her trap or her V skills. Uh, the same will go with whether she lands a crouching medium kick into soul spiral or if she lands uh, her EX soul spark, which will toss them away and allow her to also set up for her other tools like her V-Skill. Uh, V-Trigger 1 and V-Trigger 2, those are going to be really strong V-Triggers. I think V-Trigger 1 will probably be the strongest out of the two in conjunction with her V-Skill 2, her Soul Satellite. This will allow her to set play the opponent using her Soul Satellite and go for some cheeky set play options uh, with left rights, hopefully. Uh, with her Soul Illusion, that will mostly aid for more burst damage with uh, V-Skill 2 uh, as well. I think her V-Skill 1 will be used, again, primarily in matchups where it's going to be a long crawl, where she wants to keep the opponent out as much as possible, and use the tarot cards to buff herself or debuff the opponent. Uh, and yeah, I think that's going to be a solid playstyle for Rose. It's always been like that for her within every iteration of Street Fighter, where she wants to keep the opponent out and basically away from her. So yeah, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video. I hope you liked the immense breakdown that we went over, basically going over every little nook and cranny with Rose. Uh, I'm very excited for this character. I cannot wait to play her when she comes out. Hopefully they announce a release date for her soon because I literally can't wait. I know she's a work in progress, but you know, I definitely am itching to play her right now. Uh, if you like the video, if you learned something from it, if you got informed from it, definitely leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about Rose. What do you think about her new playstyle or her new uh, approach in Street Fighter V? And definitely remember to subscribe to Vesper Arcade and hit the dang notification bell so you know the next time Vesper uploads another fire video. If you like analysis like this, you can also check out my channel on Twitch, twitch.tv slash sonic underscore soul, where we cover a lot of this stuff. You damn well know when this patch drops, I will be covering every little thing about this game in terms of the more technical side of things. So definitely tune in for that. But yeah, I'm going to leave you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you guys next video. Peace.